So the premise of the Artist's Eye courses are to allow us as photographers to become better artists. And one of the ways that I show you how to do that is to understand the tools that you have in front of you. So today we're going to be using the color blend mode. And what we're going to be using the color blend mode for are things that you may not typically use it for. Number one, advanced color correction. Number two, color grading. And number three, a really cool way that I just learned about how to reduce chromatic aberration with the color blend mode. So before we get into that, this video is downloadable. If you're watching this on YouTube, just click on the link below and hit the download button. There's gonna be a link for you. If you're on the website, F64 Academy, below this video, you will see download links. So you are free to refer back to this and add this content into the course as soon as it is available. So let's get into this. The color blend mode. If you go to Adobe's website on their help blog, you will see that the color blend mode creates a result color with luminance of the base color and the hue and saturation of the blend color. This preserves the gray levels in the image and is useful for coloring monochrome images. Uh, so what exactly does that mean? Well, if we look at this image here in front of us, so we have our black to white and several gray layers in between, and then a color image that's slightly on the bluer side, a color image that's on the browner side, and a black and white photograph in the middle. So let's go ahead and make a new solid color layer. And this solid color layer can really be any color that you so desire. I'm gonna use a uh, ultramarine or cornflower colored blue. And typically how you would adjust this is to maybe adjust the opacity here, maybe adjust the blend modes. But let's look at this one blend mode. We might initially say soft light to get a color tint with this color, but look at the color blend mode like we're looking at it now. If you look here, what you're really seeing is it's almost like someone took a blue transparency and put it over top of the entire image. So you can see in the black and white photograph, our black and white tones are getting reappropriated with the blue cornflower tone that we've applied above it. But then again, look at the color images to the left and to the right. If you look at this color image and this color image, you'll notice that they almost appear to be black and white photographs like the one in the middle with the blue color over top of it. That's because the luminance values are being preserved from the uh, images underneath and the color is allowed to be applied almost like a gentle wash over the entire image. That's the basics of the color blend mode. So let's go ahead and jump into the first advanced way to use this with the advanced color correction using the color blend mode. So the image you're looking at in front of you was taken at the Missouri State Penitentiary in one of the jail cells that they have there. It's open for the public to kind of go through and uh, take pictures as you see fit. Small fee, but it's really quite interesting, even a small fee for photographers to use this stuff. So this is one of my favorite jail cell pictures. I tone mapped it, it looked pretty good to me, but as I look at it, if I zoom in right into here, you can see that this area of color almost has tone compression of the whites in that area. If you look down here, it's almost like tone compression of the whites. So the whole image is itself, the color looks all right, but in these individual areas, it doesn't look so great. So let's take a look at adding a curves adjustment layer and look at the idea behind the color blend mode. So if we move this down and we move this up, we start to get maybe a little bit better idea of how we want the color to look on that area. So if I change this to the color blend mode, you'll notice that the color shines through from that curves adjustment layer on top, allowing all of the luminance values to be picked up underneath. So if we were to go ahead and move this curve around and, and change this curve accordingly, we aren't getting any of the tone coming through here, but we are getting the color coming through here. And one of the things that I'm really looking at in particular are the areas of color that I'm getting on those areas that should be more on the reddish or brownish uh, tone, but as we see here are kind of washed out white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this curves and just go ahead and add another one here just to reset myself. I could have reset the curves, but it's easier to just delete it and add another one. I'm going to go into the actual RGB because what we're seeing here when it says RGB, that's the tone of that image. That's all of those red, green, and blue values being added together to create the luminance of the image. So if we go into the color red, and I were to go ahead and increase and decrease the color red here, you can see that it's giving me a whole wash of color on the color red on the image. Now, I only really want that in the highlights. So if I go up here and move this up, I can only get that right there in the highlights and then move this down so it doesn't get into my midtones or my shadows. Now, as you can see, it's really applying itself to some of those midtones and some of those shadows in the blue and green area. And we'll fix that in a second here. So I'm going to change this to color. 
So now we just get the residual color of this laying down and it won't modify the tones because you saw before here, it's allowing the tone to be modified along with the color because we increase the red. So all the red tones, the luminance values in the color red are also being increased. But when we change this to color, now it doesn't increase those luminance values. It only allows us to add the color to it. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into here and go into blue. Now, if we move this up, we're going to add more blue to the overall image. If we move it down, we're going to add more yellow. So adding red there looked good. But what I want to do is kind of create a brown. So if I mix red and yellow, I'll get more brown. So I'll bring the yellow down into this highlight area and again, only modify the highlight area so it doesn't affect our tone for our shadows and our midtones. So that looks all right, but we still have quite a bit left here. So we can even go further into our advanced blending modes and double click right inside here and going into our blend if options. So I've got what I want in my red areas, but my blues and my greens are getting kind of destroyed in the process. Well, the same thing applies here. So we can go into our blend if and go into the color blue. Now the underlying layer blue is what we're worried about here. So if I move this slider over, you can start to see how our blue is not being affected anymore. So I'll zoom into here. And as I move this over to the right, you'll start to see that blue doesn't get affected. But watch when we, when we cross over to about right here, you see how now it's no longer affecting our wall either, which we wanted to stay on the wall. So we'll move that until it touches the wall and then press alt or option to split this and feather it. So we get a nice feather for the color blue. And that looks good on the color blue so far. We can take off our preview and kind of see the difference here. But let's look at the color green. Same thing. We'll go into this blend if principles, go to the color green, and we'll zoom in on the color green. And we'll move this over until it doesn't affect our color green anymore, but at the same time, it preserves the uh, brownish tint that we have on the wall. So I'll move this over until I can see right about there is where it affects it too much. So I'll go right to here, press Alt or Option and split it, move it over and press OK. And then we'll zoom back out. So now we see the before and after. There's the before, there's the after. We've done advanced color correction using the color blend mode and blend if to ensure that our reds and yellows get applied to those areas that should have red and yellow on them and not look like tone compressed junk. It even fixed some of the area on the floor. Now, of course, you could also go into your mask and you could paint with the color black to really make sure that this doesn't affect certain areas if you still see it affecting them. So let's go ahead and look at our second way. Our second way of using the color blend mode will be to color grade our image. <laughs> So for the next one, we're going to be talking about color grading. And with this, we can use the color blend mode to color grade our images with two very uh, interesting techniques. So if we look at this image here, this is a gorgeous place to stay. I guarantee that uh, you could go here all expenses paid if you'd like to. Uh, this is in the Palouse. It's in an abandoned house. It's in the Palouse in Washington. It's a really interesting place to shoot. I had quite a bit of fun there. Although uh, my friend Jerry will uh, attest that I was afraid of being attacked by zombies. So yeah. Okay, my imagination runs wild. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to use two of my favorite techniques to color grade this image. I'm going to go ahead and go to the hue saturation adjustment layer here, and we're going to select something called colorize. Now with colorize, you can use any one particular color to be applied to our image as a whole. And as you move the hue, you can change the hue of that particular color. So if you've ever seen the Wizard of Oz, we're just changing the horse and making that horse a different color. Okay, if you haven't seen that, go watch it. So we're going to go ahead and change the blend mode now to color. And you're going to notice that now what happens, just like we saw in the last one, it's allowing the color to be applied to the image, but still keep the tones from the actual photograph underneath as we go through this. So we'll go ahead and we can change our hue here and we can modify our hue accordingly. And we're using that color blend mode to preserve the tone of the image underneath. So all we're really doing is applying a color wash. Now this can be really powerful to be make a monochromatic look to your photograph or to tint it. So if we make this monochromatic look, uh, looks like a, you know, pretty much an orange monochromatic look, we can drop the opacity here so that we get just a slight color wash over our image instead of it being uh, the full on orange color that it is here. If you're looking for a monochromatic look, this is great. But let's say you just want to add a little bit of touch of color to it. This is a way to do it. And then you can always hop right back up here and move this slider over and change that color as you see fit. 
and then drop the opacity to make sure it doesn't come through. You can increase that saturation and also modify the lightness of that color to make some of the, uh, to change the hue essentially, or the luminance of the color that you're applying to the color over top of it. So that's one way. Another way is to use a gradient map. So we can change this gradient map to say this sepia tone looking color. And we, we use the gradient map. What the gradient map does, it's plotting out colors for specific tones. So this is basically saying that a dark brown is going to be placed over our blacks and a cream is going to be placed over our whites. So there is no true white or black here. So instead of having to go through and adjust our gradient map to get those whites and blacks to exist, we could just go in here and change this to color. So now we have that sepia tone color gradient map, but underneath it, we have the tones that are coming through from that image because we're preserving them using our color blend mode. And you can use these in conjunction with that one another too. So let's say we uh, use this gradient map here. We drop the opacity a little bit on this gradient map, and then we use this hue saturation adjustment layer here to maybe modify the tone accordingly there also. And again, you can use your advanced blending options if you'd like to, so that this area in the blend diff mode does not any allow any of the black to be affected. So basically, the underlying color of the gradient map is going to show through the hue saturation in those areas that are pure black. So that's one way you can use it too. You can use them in conjunction with one another, or you can use one or the other. Using the color blend mode is one of my favorite ways to color grade because I can get the exact tint of the color that I want over top of my image and then just drop the opacity a little bit to the taste that I'm acquired to and also use the blending options to adjust those accordingly. So let's go ahead and go into our last and final one using the color blend mode to fix pesky chromatic aberration. So what we're looking at here is a nice scene that I took from Portland, Maine, beautiful little town, but we have quite a bit of chromatic aberration because I was using a 14 to millimeter Rokinon lens on a Sony a6000. So if you see here, we've got quite a bit of chromatic aberration here that's coming from that lens with all the distortion of light coming through it, and then quite a bit of chromatic aberration in this tree. So what we could typically do is go in here to lens corrections, go to color, and then go to remove chromatic aberration, and sometimes that'll fix it. We can even move the purple amount up and the green amount up, and sometimes that will even fix it. But it looks like we still have a trace element of chromatic aberration here. And if we were to zoom over here, we have a trace element of chromatic aberration over here. Even by changing the hue on these, sometimes we can't quite fix all the chromatic aberration that we would see here because we still have some on the edges of the sign. And right here, those are just color areas that are coming through in the chromatic aberrations that really shouldn't be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Photoshop. So press open image. I've done the chromatic aberration fix to it. Now I need to go into the further chromatic aberration fix. Now, this trick comes from an individual named Steve Perry, not the journey singer. He is a, another Photoshop educator that I happened to see. I believe it was somewhere on YouTube. Really cool technique. So I'm giving him the credit because that's where I saw it. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to those areas of chromatic aberration. And in particular, I'm going to zoom in over here to this area of chromatic aberration. Where was that sign? Let me zoom out real quick and go to that sign. So I'll zoom out here and go to where the sign is because there's some chromatic aberration right there. That's a perfect little swatch for us to look at. So what we need to do in order to use the color blend mode to fix chromatic aberration, you're thinking, how the heck is this even possible? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to blur all the surrounding colors of that chromatic aberration until that little speck and trace element of chromatic aberration disappears. And then when we change the blend mode to color, it's going to allow us to get the tone from that color underneath, but apply the color of the new color that's blurred. Sounds really technical. Let's just go ahead and press Commander Control J and go to Filter, go to Blur, and go to Gaussian Blur. So if we look at this Gaussian Blur here, we blur this until we start to see that chromatic aberration go away. And it's usually between, I'd say, 6 and 20. It just depends on how pesky your chromatic aberration is. Sometimes if you go up to that high 20 range, you'll see what happens when we do that. But if we go to you know maybe 6, 10, that should work, and press OK. Now we have a blurred out image, okay? So it's all blurry. If we go to color though, look at the difference now. That area of chromatic aberration, when we zoom into its to 650%, we can see that that area of chromatic aberration disappears. However, some things to keep into consideration here. Other areas are also going to blur. Notice how these areas of yellow are blurring. And when we apply that blend mode to it, we get this feathering kind of nastiness around there. Well, in that case, we'll just leave this blend, leave this color blend mode blurred layer on top. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to add a mask there and press Command or Control I to invert it. So basically what that's doing now is it's saying, hey, nothing's really happening here. But if we were to use a brush and paint with the color white on that mask, we would start to bring back those areas where that blur was effective. So what we want to do is look for those areas of chromatic aberration that we knew existed, like this area on the sign. We can just get our brush and a really small brush and just kind of brush in just on that area of chromatic aberration, just those really pesky areas that are bothering you. Just go ahead and zoom in real close and start moving them onward. Now, I'm not sure where Steve Perry got this from, but man, it is a genius technique for removing chromatic aberration that cannot be fixed in something like Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. So this is really some advanced technique stuff that I, I enjoy this kind of stuff because now even these pesky areas in the tree, boom, all of that chromatic aberration is now gone. So here's the before. Let me zoom in real close here. I'm going to zoom in real tight. Here's the before. Here's the after. That's even after this before image is after we've done chromatic aberration reduction in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. But now we've done the blur on there and really taken care of that. Now I know a lot of these things you're probably not going to remember. So what I've done is I've created a series of actions here. It's called a closer look bonus video one actions. You're going to see tip number two, tip number two, and tip number three. So tip number one, uh, that one we talked about where we did some advanced color correction with a curves adjustment layer. There's really not a good way to do an action for that because it's very dependent upon the image that you're using. But what we can do is we can press this perfect sepia and we can make a sepia style image right there using our color blend mode. We've got another one that'll do the same thing and make a platinum style blend mode here. So it looks like a, a platinum look. So a cyan bluish type of look, but it lets some of the color through. And then what we have here, I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer, press play on this one. This is the chromatic aberration reduction. It's going to stop before the Gaussian blur. And it's going to tell you, hey, you might want to put this between 20 and 10 and 20, press OK. And then it'll automatically have it set to 10. So you can just press OK there. And then what it's going to do is it's automatically going to give you a mask that's set to black and it will also automatically set your brush to white and relatively small so that you can now zoom into your image where those areas of chromatic aberration are and just start painting right away. And that will do that for you. So if you forgot all those steps, these actions will do the same. And again, that's in the area below. If you click that link, that'll take you where you can get those actions and also where you can download this video. So the artist's eye, a closer look is going to be released relatively soon. And once it is, you can go ahead and add this bonus video to that documentation. And once again, this was using the color blend mode to do three very powerful things. Number one, advanced color correction. Number two, color grading. And number three, chromatic aberration reduction, which was brought to us by Steve Perry. And I should have been gone. Oh, no, no, not the journey singer, oh, the educator. Thank you very much for watching this, and uh, if you have any questions, comments, critiques, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Once again, my name is Blake Rudis. If you like this, please share it, comment on it, and if you're on YouTube and you haven't subscribed to me yet, subscribe, 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 because every week you get a new video tutorial coming straight your way. Thanks again for watching.